everyone, it's Russell here with Love Create Celebrate and today I'm excited to show you my new workbench. Welcome back to our channel where we share home renovations and DIYs. I've been dreaming about this bad boy for a couple years now and I finally got a chance or I made time to build it. Some of the features I wanted when I was designing this bench was I wanted something to help me with like gluing layups, um, something to help with uh, clamping and then just a bunch of storage as well. So I'm really happy with how it turned out and I hope you guys like it and stay tuned to see how it got built. A blog post with a link to the build plans will be included in the description. This will work best with a video in order to build this bench. To start, I began cutting all my 2x4s and planing them down for the whole frame of the table. Once all my boards were cut and run through the planer, I began marking out my notches where all my legs and frame joined together. There's a bunch of way to notch boards. I find the easiest way is to set your table saw blade to the correct height and using your guide uh, just to keep running it through until you have the whole area cleaned out. Once I completed my notches, I did a quick check just to make sure my other 2x4 frame boards fit inside and then I began prep for making my table legs. I had four legs in total um, and each leg consisted of three boards that I glued together, glued and screwed together. I did it this way so that I had a notch for each face of the table and a bottom and top rail that would connect in. Once all these legs were glued and the glue had set, I did a quick sand just to smoothen them out so that I would have a nice finish when I went to paint the surface at the end. With the legs all complete and the glue set, I decided to move on to building the adjustable feet. This is optional, but I wanted to be able to move and adjust my feet just because my shop floor isn't perfect, so this way I can make sure my table sits level. I ended up using Teflon, but you also could use a hardwood. You just want to use something that's going to hold the screws so that when you go to adjust the feet either up or down and tighten the nut, the nut that's glued in doesn't slip or break free. You can see I used tape on the nuts when I was gluing everything together just because I didn't want to get glue inside the threads. And here in with the end photos you can see me screwing and also pre-drilling all the holes when I go to screw the leg ends to the leg. I also used a little bit of a construction adhesive to make sure they sat securely on the bottom and didn't move. This worked well and it allowed me to have a couple extra inches of adjustment in the legs. These were actually extra legs I had for my router table from when I changed the router table legs to a wheel. With the legs and feet all complete, I moved on to making my table top. I used two layers of 3 quarter inch thick MDF. I used my track saw to cut the MDF top pieces to size and then I began assembling my frame on the top just to make sure everything was going to fit before I started doing my glue up. I used pocket holes to secure the frame together as well as secure the legs to the frame. Once I was happy with the fit, I moved on to assembly of the table top. Along two of the sides, I ended up using the Craig track system. I wanted to go with this because I wanted to use their clamps just to help hold work pieces when you're sanding or if you're doing glue ups. To do this, I laid the tracks out and then I marked out the center lines of where the screws would sit. I marked uh, kind of an even spacing for all the screws supplied with the tracks and drilled all the holes, did a dry fit to make sure the tracks would sit where they needed to and moved on to prep for gluing of the two faces together. With the track in place, I moved on to gluing the two pieces of MDF together. I was able to use the tracks to help secure the edges of the MDF and then moved on to laying out and measuring out all the holes for where the bench dogs could be placed or the inline clamps. And then I used those holes just with screws to bond the two pieces of MDF while the glue was drying. Once the glue set, I began drilling all my three quarter inch diameter holes. I made a bit of a jig just to make this process go faster. On top of the 2x4 frame, I added some notches at the locations where the bolts from the track system were sitting on the underside of the MDF board. I did a quick dry fit just to make sure the notches cleared all the bolt holes and then I proceeded with attaching the legs to the frame. You're not attaching the frame to the MDF board here, I'm just using that MDF board to kind of hold everything in place. I used construction adhesive and screws to secure the legs and frame and bottom rails all together. 
With the bottom structure assembled, I began cutting out the piece of MDF that would sit as the bottom shelf for the table. I found the easiest way to get the bottom piece in place with the frame structure built was to cut it out, notch the corners, and then actually cut it in half just in order to fit it in between all the top and bottom frame pieces. Once I was happy with the fit, I glued and screwed it down and I actually left it a little bit on the big side and then I used a router with a flush trim bit to cut it down to size and make sure all the edges were nice and even. Once I was happy with all the edges and joints, I used a little bit of drywall compound to putty any of the cracks and fill in the gaps and then did a light sand just to smooth everything out. I continued on with building the frame structure. The next step was to add the rails where I would have my drawers sit. I had two drawers that I was using just from an old cabinet and then I ended up making a custom drawer for the center of the table. I made the drawer out of some of the scrap MDF and a plywood bottom that I had lying around the shop. Once you have your drawers built, or if you're reusing old drawers, I did a quick test fit just to make sure everything fit and that they slid in and out nicely, and then I proceeded with building the back shelf. Again, I just had some of the extra MDF from when I built the top. I glued it and screwed it and nailed it in place and filled any of the cracks along the edges with some caulking. Once I was happy with the caulking and all the joints being filled, I moved on to prepping the table for paint. I did one coat of primer to start. I used a brush and roller and a paint sprayer on the first coat just because the primer is a little bit thicker. But then on the second coat, I was able to use just the paint sprayer. The paint sprayer was slick. Um, it gets into all the edges really easy and it adds a really nice smooth finish coat for your end product. I wanted to protect the top of the MDF as well, so to do this I added two coats of varnish to the MDF. With the varnish dry, I added the rails and began to get ready to put the top on the frame. I pre-drilled all my screw holes and then added a construction adhesive to the top of the frame. I put the frame on top and then used clamps and screws to secure the frame to the top MDF surface. I then proceeded with making fascia pieces for the top portion of the frame. Before attaching the pieces to the table, I would give the top edge a light sand and then also put a quick coat of varnish on this edge. Just in case you ever spilled water on the table, I didn't want the water to be able to soak and swell the MDF. I used construction adhesive along the perimeter and then used brad nails just to secure the pieces in place and clamps to tighten it up to the edges. I proceeded with this with all the faces just to give kind of a box look to the entire tabletop. In order to get ready for the drawer side, I mounted all the rails and then proceeded with installing all the drawers just to make sure that everything was sitting flush and in the right position. Once I was happy with how the drawers fit, I continued on with trimming out the drawer faces and around the drawers using MDF. I started with trim around the center drawer. Using a speed square, I would make sure that it was sitting square and also continuing to dry fit all the drawers just to make sure they slid out and still had clearance against all the trim faces. Before I added all the fascia to the edges of the table, I moved on to the side where I had my open shelf. I wanted my pocket hole jig to sit flush with my workbench um, and also just have a spot where it could be secured to the bench but at the same time I didn't want to have a permanent place for it. I wanted it to be able to come in and out and have a total flat surface if needed. So I ended up coming up with this solution. I cut a hole on the center of the worktop on the one side that would allow my K5 Craig pocket jig to sit. Um, I used a skill saw and router to make sure the cut was nice and square and flush and then I made a bit of a base for the pocket jig to sit on. 
I glued some scrap wood together. I used a piece of half inch plywood and half inch MDF and glued and screwed this to the bottom of my MDF tabletop. Using two pieces of three quarter inch MDF, I made a bit of a blank to sit inside of this area when I wasn't using the pocket jig. I then finished off adding trim to all the other faces of the table edges. With all the fascia trim and drawer faces attached, I used a router with a flush trim bit to smooth out any of the edges and then also my orbital sander to smooth down and sand down all the faces to make sure we had a nice smooth finish for the end product. For any of the gaps or cracks where the MDF pieces met, I made a bit of a filler compound using sanding dust from my orbital sander, wood glue and water and mixing this together. I used a putty knife to fill this in any of the gaps. Once I was happy with all the fascia and all the gaps that were filled, I gave the entire table another quick sand. Once the sand was complete, I gave it a good clean and then applied another two coats of varnish just to seal and protect the MDF surface. I'm so happy with how the workbench turned out. The insert for the Craig pocket jig has been a huge time saver and it's really handy having the large workbench to work off when doing the pocket holes. Having the grid of holes on the workbench top makes it really universal when you're using the inline clamps or bench jogs when you're working with different kinds and sizes of pieces. If you're gluing things or if you're chiseling things or you just want to lay things out, um, this all comes in really handy. The tracks on the perimeter of the table are also really nice because you can securely hold down pieces and the clamps can give you a lot of extra clamping force to hold things so if you need to hammer against something it will hold things in place securely. Overall the workbench has been an amazing addition to the shop. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit that bell so you can be notified of other great home DIY and renovation videos. Also, don't forget to hit like if you like this video and if you do have any questions, throw them in the comments below and I'll make sure that I or Lindy answer them to our best ability. Thanks again. Stay tuned for other great videos from Love Create Celebrate. Clapping. You don't talk so fast. Okay, sorry. Because then it becomes like blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I can't. Cow, I now, I brown, cow. Dogs okay. Welcome back. No. Hit that bell in the top corner so that you can subscribe. So the top I don't think it's okay. Hit. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Um, if you did, hit that bell so that you can be notified of future videos that Love Create Celebrate puts on you. No. Just say.